Hello, this is Leela This, and I'm the host of Key Ideas. It's a new year, and with it comes a fresh episode format called Microcasting. Stay tuned for more fascinating interviews coming up in 2022. And now, in between, I'll deliver small bits of content in about 10 minutes or less. Over the years, I've been told that I tend to blast information like a fire hose. Shorter episodes are my way of limiting myself to a trickle from a garden hose. My hope is that this eliminates a feeling of overwhelm and will allow you to soak in and absorb actionable ideas into each lesson. So what ideas will I be pouring over in these bite-sized episodes? They'll all stem from my passion for what I call off-bench time. First, let me be clear about what I mean by off-bench time. I think of it as a label for three possible parts of a lesson. Number one, a designated time before, during, or after a lesson where students complete assignments off the bench. Number two, any time spent doing a purposeful activity that engages any part of the body beyond just the fingers at the keys. And number three, any time spent completing activities that involve tactile or tech savvy tools. In a nutshell, off bench time is time spent doing anything besides playing repertoire that jumpstarts skills on the bench. Now, before you swipe up for the next podcast show, because this off bench stuff feels like a giant leap out of your comfort zone, let me share why I'm so passionate about integrating off bench time and why I believe you should be too. I'll use the acronym RICE. R-I-C-E, as a reminder of why off-bench time is key to unlocking student potential. R stands for reinforcement. Educational experts recommend frequent, low-stake quizzes because they make things stick for good. These quizzes can be, but don't have to be limited to a short round of questions and answers during a lesson. Let students show their comprehension in their bodies or through gamification or pencil and paper away from the bench. I stands for implement. Neuroscience has shown that students learn with their entire body, standing, jumping, bouncing, clapping, singing. Unfasten that seatbelt, get off the bench and integrate whole body learning, even just a smidge in every lesson. C stands for connection. Bouncing a ball is nothing new to students. When they bounce the ball to a steady beat, it's tying a familiar action to an auditory task. Relating the known to the unknown, making connections is another way to reinforce and make things stick. Last, E. E stands for engagement. Teaching is more than imparting information. It's our top priority to prime the pump, roll out the red carpet, and set the stage so that students are excited to see what's next. When we captivate attention, the brain is prepped and ready to tackle the process of learning. And that brings me to my most important reason in my campaign for off-bench time, and that is those humans who walk in the door eager to learn how to make music at the piano. They hired us to make magic happen at the keys, and that magic starts with discovery and curiosity. A treasure chest of off-bench tools is like magic dust when students are mystified by a concept that we thought we clearly explained. It's not their issue, it's ours. Instead of rolling our eyes, we must point the finger back at ourselves and sprinkle some fresh dust on our lesson plans. Our commitment to filling in those gaps in understanding will sharpen our instruction and power up those coveted student light bulb moments. Now, here's where the rubber hits the road. I've talked about why to include off-bench time and when to include it in lessons, but now it's time to talk about how to integrate off-bench time in your lessons. The upcoming episodes will address the how, and so I begin with this challenge for you. Empower yourself with this short question, what if? Before the next episode drops, your assignment is to ask yourself, what if? What if I give my student a drum or even a bucket and she plays a steady beat as I introduce and play through a new piece? What if I ask my online student to grab a pot and wooden spoon from the kitchen and he echoes back a rhythm pattern of a new piece? What if I ask him to create a rhythm and I echo it back? A simple question like what if opens up a treasure chest of curiosity for you and your students. 
I challenge you to dust off that toolbox, clear the cobwebs, and take a chance. The time spent away from the keys matters, and I'll be your biggest cheerleader as you get off the bench. If you're interested in diving deeper into my off-bench time that comes in tandem with my lessons, head to the show notes. You'll find a link to an extensive article and videos about how I amplify my curriculum with time away from the bench. And if you want to learn more about my teaching philosophy, how I plan lessons and groom practice skills, check out my planning kit for piano teachers. Perhaps you've already embraced off-bench time but have a question. Please email me or shoot me a direct message on Facebook or Instagram at Leela Viss. I'm here to help. Before I sign off, here's your invitation to a unique online course starting January 13, 2022 called Teaching Beginners with Whole Body Learning. The dynamic Aussie Paul Myatt, who joined me in episode 35, is hosting the class and I'm pleased to be serving as a coach. I hope you can make it. Find a link to register in the show notes and make sure to use 88 Piano Keys 20 for $20 off. Stay tuned for episode 40 when I chat about more off-bench ideas and the three-stage process that locks students into a loop of learning. This is Leela Viss. See you in the trenches and asking myself each day, what if? What if?